So having been asked to do this theory, I'd like to begin by just showing you exactly what it takes step by step to become a sport in the Olympic Games and all of the organizations that will accept and that will give you the criteria for which you must succeed to become in that level. So first of all, to be recognized, the first thing to do is to gain observer status with the Global Association of International Sports Federations. In the past, there was always the chicken and the egg story. We always had the problem that national federations could never be recognized by their ministries of sport or their highest sporting authorities because they didn't have the recognition of the global association to be recognized at a global level. And having this issue caused huge problems with being able to have the requirement of 40 national federations. This is a very good thing that now there is the observer status. It will help in this chicken egg situation to limit that by allowing the international body to be recognized to be an observer, which allows the national bodies to go about their work to gain recognition nationally. This is, of course, granted by the Sport Accord Council. It's only for a two-year duration, and it gives you the right to attend the General Assembly. So once you've managed to gain this observer status, today there are seven international federations that have that status. The next step is to become a member of the Global Association of International Sports Federations. Now, becoming a member is a work that's required as much locally as it is globally. And the International Esports Federation has made the application in 2013 to be a member of Sport Accord, having achieved the majority of the requirements, except for that 40 national federations recognized by high sporting authority. That's where the local work comes in, because without the local organizations and the local national federations to gain that recognition, then it's impossible to gain membership to the Global Association of International Sports Federations. Currently, there are 28 national federations and the requirement is 40. These are a couple other points and the presentation will be circulated later for everyone who would like to get the certain points out of it. I'd like to say that the WADA code compliancy was done by the International Esports Federation in 2013 already and that a couple more interesting items that are required for this membership is of course to organize world events for your national federations, not only sporting events like the world championships we got to see last week, but at the same time also global assemblies and international assemblies such as this. It's very important to unify the data of the community, statistically speaking, at every single level, being the athletes' data, where they compete, who are the national championships, where are the ranking levels, and of course, who comes to the world championships. So the full application process to be a member of Sport Accord is regulated by the Sport Accord statutes, which all of you can see online. The hardest item in this requirement are the 40 national federations and again that is where the local work is the most important with that observer status of your international body you should be able to move forth and gain the recognition of your highest sporting authority or your ministry of sport and the people who vote for the acceptance of esports inside sport accord as a member is the general assembly meaning the over 100 members of sport accord now once you're a member of sport accord what does that mean? What's the next step? The next step is to participate in multi-sport games. And while you're participating in multi-sport games, whether it be the Universiade, which is the, the uh, multi-sport game of the universities, whether it be the World Games, whether it be the Commonwealth Games, or the Sport Accord World Mind Games, if some further additions will come forth, we will see or not in the future, it's important to participate in multi-sport events for the next level and the next step. However, it's very good that I've already noticed and seen that IESF has been working and collaborating and discussing with these specific bodies about the inclusion of esports, if not officially, as they are not a member of Sport Accord yet, at least as an exhibition sport. And one example that can be seen is that not too long ago in the 2017 uh, martial arts and indoor games, the Olympic Council of Asia did have esports present. So now you recognize you're a member of Sport Accord. What's the next step? The next step is to become recognized by the International Olympic Committee. And how is this done? Well, it's very nice to, to say that just a couple days ago, there was a very important memorandum of understanding signed between the Global Association of International Sports Federations and the IOC. And one of the points out of all the different points of collaboration or understanding is streamlining the process of recognition, streamlining the membership process. What does this mean? This means that the work that you've already done or achieved so far, to gain membership of Sport Accord, doesn't need to be replicated. 
only the additional items and the additional missing components are required. What are those? So the Olympic Charter regulates the recognition of international federations in Article 25. This just means that they can freely accept international federations. But out of the hardline results, or the, the last asking, they're asking for 10 additional national federations. And probably the hardest point out of all of them is that you need to be solidarily the only organization dealing with that sport for five years. Above that, the process is that the IOC executive board will have a reception from the sports department of the IOC. That is where the application is made. And after you've made the application, it's been given to the board, the board has accepted it, it moves on to the IOC session to vote for it, to vote for the acceptance of the International Federation, the recognition for the International Federation. So now you're an Olympic recognized organization. It means that you're a member of ERIFS. The next step, according to this keynote, it was how do we become a sport in the Olympic Games? So once you recognize, the fourth one is the application for the Olympic Games. And to do that officially, Tokyo has already selected their events that they will have. The only thing left for Tokyo is an exhibition event, so not an official event inside the structure of the Olympic Games. But the next one around the corner after the Buenos Aires Youth Olympic Games is the Lausanne Youth Olympic Games, or the Paris Olympic Games in 2024 or so on in Los Angeles. And the lucky thing is that with the passing of the Agenda 2020 that everyone has heard so much about, there's one specific point in the agenda that changes the whole structure of the Olympic Games, which is very important and makes it easier for esports to be inside. That point is point number 10. And point number 10 says that the program of the Olympic Games is moving from a sport-based program to an event-based program, meaning that you don't need to have your entire international federation included in the Olympic Games, but rather the local organizing committees have the ability, the responsibility, and the power to select additional events in their city. Now, as that was in the past where only the IOC session could decide an entire sports inclusion, which you can imagine the difficulty, especially with the existing sports inside the program and their opposition towards it. Now, the fact that a local organizing committee has the ability to include esports into a game makes it a lot more streamlined. So with the recognition on one side to protect you, and on the other side, having the ability of local organizing committees to recommend you as an additional event for the Olympic Games, the chances are very high. So that's pretty much the, the paperwork around how to officially become recognized and how to officially apply to the Olympic Games. And today, this is a topic that is very hot and heated, and pretty much every single person around the planet involved in sports, business, marketing, or politics is talking about esports. So what is the benefit of being inside the Olympic Games? What is the benefit of being recognized? Well, the first thing that's very important is that the rivalry issue. It will protect IESF and will sustain IESF to be the world body, as well as, more importantly, the national federations in each country to be the national federations recognized by the world body, thereby having the sole right and autonomy to regulate that sport nationally. Now, this means, of course, finance, because having esports inside the Olympic Games means that through the qualification criteria for that Olympic event, there are going to be many championships from which the Ministry of Sport or the NOC or the highest sporting authority will have budget for supporting those teams to be able to travel, be able to compete, be able to train. At the same time, not only that, but there will be prize money given to those athletes when they win, which is higher motivation for them to compete. And not to mention the exposure and the status of being around the Olympic movement, around the Olympic Games, it will really be able to sustain and push forward the motivation of the athletes themselves to one day get a medal. And I think you're in for a treat after this session because we do have an actual professional athlete on the panel who maybe will give you some more insight about what it would mean to them to be able to not be only a world champion or a club champion, but to also be an Olympic champion. So around the world, as I said before, I just want to present three views before moving on to the, the panel. Just recently, three days ago, the view has been circulated that esports is an entirely different activity than regular sports, and as such, should be completely separate from the Olympic Games. There should be an own Olympic Games that does only esports. And this would be an article that was uh, circulated from 
Mr. Burns, who is uh, a big guy in sport. He's the president and founder of Helios Partners and many other roles around the world. And it has been voiced and has been copied by a lot of other uh, international heads for sport. On the exact other spectrum, you have Forbes discussing how esports will be in the 2024 Olympic Games already present and how they plan to monitor and how they plan to monetize the video feeds from esports themselves. So in summary, in summary, this is the topic today. And this is exactly why it's very important to unify together as an international body with national bodies to support each other, to grow, to get recognition, and to apply for all of the following aspects. Because in the last Olympic summit that took place not too long ago, last week, the esports was one of the main items that was discussed. It's a topic that's today. So in summary, it's important to say that IESF has already undertaken a lot of different work and a lot of steps and is doing this forward to have recognition and be included in all the various, various high events. It's vitally important that the national bodies, with the existence of now this observer status, armed with that shield and with that, that task, reach out and gain their recognition from their national sporting authority or from the Ministry of Sport. Vitally important is to create the community of esports, to have together all of the events of all of the athletes, all of the clubs, all of the national federations involved in the international federation, to have them all in one platform where you can see them, communicate with them, interact with them, and unite them to help you in your endeavor and your task. Because the truth is that the majority of leaders in ministries of sports or various high organizations don't see esports, don't understand esports, don't understand what it means to play a video game is how they perceive it. And the only way to change that attitude around is to create your community, to show your community, and empowered by your community, go forth to have the proper recognition. Lots of issues have been resolved regarding rivalry. And the last most important part, in my opinion, for this process to go forth is the collaboration and the relationship with the IP holders. So I have two more minutes on the clock. If there are any questions, there we go. If there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them now. If not, the panel I think will begin after, but that was the presentation. I hope it was helpful to understand a little more about the process of becoming an Olympic sport. Um, so if there are any questions, if you raise your hand, uh, we will give you the mic. Uh, the question is open to all the floor. Everyone's ready for the panel. Andy. I promise I didn't tell him to ask me this earlier. <laughs> Thanks very much, Vlad. That was a really interesting presentation. And I guess I just wanted your comment on the recent announcement of the tournament that will precede Pyeongchang Winter Games. Uh, led under the sponsorship of, of Intel. And uh, I, I saw the press release from the IOC about this, which, which has Timo Lumi at the heart of it. So broadcasting within the IOC is at the heart of this. So I wonder what your thoughts are on it being a kind of tournament that just precedes the games and whether you would imagine in future games it would, it would be more aligned with the program itself. Thank you, Andy. Uh, unfortunately, I was on an airplane and in airports for the past 40 hours being delayed on the way here. But I think that one of, one of the most important items you just brought up, and that is the sponsors and the partners of the Olympic movement. And actually, I think that you brought up Intel, but another stronger partner, in my opinion, for pushing forth the agenda of ISF and esports inclusion in the games is actually Alibaba. Because Alibaba Cloud is now a top sponsor of the Olympic movement. And as we know, IESF has signed an agreement with Ali Sport. So the way the connection is made, you brought up correctly, the way that you push forward your agenda is with the local organizing committees, which of course being in Korea, it's a great relationship that they have already formed, with the sponsors and partners of the IOC that can push that pressure forward as well. And of course, if you don't have the games, if you don't have the right from the IP holders, then there's almost nothing to play. So it's a very good point, and, and I truly believe and, and hope that esports can become a member of the Olympic family, will become a member of the Olympic family, and that they will be included in the Olympic Games. At the beginning, maybe as an exhibition sport, 
but further on in the program itself. Thank you very much.